Hello everyone, Ray here. Welcome back to my channel. Yet another very exciting episode. If it's your first time stopping by, I'm Ray Kimbawazi. I'm a content creator from Uganda. Welcome to my channel Connect of Uganda, where I tell you lots of things, especially development of things that will help you about uh, this country. So today we're going to discuss the cost of living in Uganda 2024. It's going to be a sit-down video quite different from what I normally do because I want to try and explain for you each and everything as much as I can. So we're going to break down this video into different categories. One is going to be rent, two is going to be transport, three is going to be food, four is going to be communication, five is going to be household items, and six is going to be Wi-Fi or internet. So I'm going to prefer you guys YouTube chapters. I think you know YouTube chapters, so you can just click and skip to the part that you want without having to scroll through the entire video. So yeah, subscribe, like, share, and let's dive right into the video. So let's start with rent. I have my notebook here. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to take an example of a one bedroom unit for a single person someone like me or if you don't have any kids or anything like that you're just one person and you want a place to stay so there's going to be two categories one is furnished and then two is unfurnished so let's start with unfurnished apartments or unfurnished units so unfurnished units are going to go anywhere from six hundred thousand uganda shillings to one million ugandan shillings that is 160 dollars a month to 270 dollars a month for a one bedroom apartment that is unfurnished in a very nice residential neighborhood like maybe Chanja, Shira, Bukoto, Tinda, like nice neighborhoods that are very good to live in. So the one bedroom unit is usually a bedroom with its bathroom and a living room. So that is considered a one bedroom unit. If it is unfurnished, that is the amount that you should expect to pay. And then let's go to furnished units. So the furnished units are going to be a little bit tricky because of the Airbnb business. But if you find a very decent, well-furnished unit, you should expect to pay about $50 per day. But if you convert it to a monthly basis, that would be $1,500 per month. But if you're going to pay for an entire month, it means you could easily negotiate a discount with the owner of the unit. And at least you should pay at least $1,000 per month and above. You may get something less, but at least that should be like your budget. I'm not guaranteeing that you'll find something cheaper, but you may find it. But expect to pay at least a thousand dollars a month. That's why you find each and everything within the unit, the bed, the bed sheets, towels, everything. What you use for the kitchen, just like an Airbnb. For us, unfurnished units in Uganda do not come with anything. You won't find a stove, you won't find a fridge, you won't find nothing. They just give you empty rooms. Those are unfurnished units within Kampala or within Uganda. Yes, yeah, so what I would suggest here is, one, know what your budget is. And then secondly, do as much research as you can. So I always prefer to recommend for you guys sources where you can get lots of information other than just consuming my content so i'm going to list for you some instagram pages which post rental listings each and every day i'm going to give at least like two or three so that when you go through all of them you are able to compare prices you're able to know how rental things are working out in uganda because sometimes it's difficult when people just come to me and ask for a unit they have certain expectations but then they are not sure of how the market is it so you may tell them the price they may think you're trying to cheat them so my, my preference personally is to give people resources so that they can go and do their research and know okay one bedroom is this range two bedroom is this range three bedroom is this range so if i have such and such amount according to after viewing all these pages that are posting rental properties this, i should be able to get something decent for myself Rather than coming to Ray and then you ask me, I give you something, you think it's too pricey. So I prefer people to do their own research because then they come to you, you know, they know what to expect or they know what's happening in the market. So the other thing I have to mention is that if you prefer high-end areas like Naguru, Kololo, Nakasero, renting in those areas can be very expensive. 
they might ask you for three thousand dollars a month for a two-bedroom apartment they might ask you for two thousand dollars a month those are considered high-end areas muyenga <laughs> i'll just write for you the names so just bear in mind that the cost of the apartment is also determined by the location or the neighborhood where you're going to be staying so the areas that I mentioned first, Chanja, Chira, Najera, Tinda, Wokoto, like those are nice neighborhoods where we all live, they're like for middle income people, for lack of a better word. And then there is like uptown or like high end areas, Kololo, Nakasero, they'll ask you in the thousands plus of dollars for a furnished apartment. So I know someone is going to say, Ray, that is a lot of money. We know Ugandans are very poor. The people who make like maybe $100 a month or $200 a month, but they live in Kampala. How do they live? So what I'll say is they are rental units in Kampala that are as cheap as 200k or $50 a month. But I do not encourage or advise anyone to go and live in such places. And if you find any sensible person living in an apartment or in a room of 200k per month, they are probably working very, very hard in order to leave that situation and get themselves into a better place. So you can definitely get things below $100, but they are not places that I would recommend for anyone to live in. So the other thing I like to mention is that you can get a studio room, like I think they call it a studio room. So whereas a one bedroom apartment is a living room and a bedroom, a studio room is just one room. But this one room has your bathroom, it has your kitchen, it has your living room. So you can get a good studio room at 400,000 Ugandan shillings. That's like a hundred dollars, would be like a hundred and ten dollars. But that would be unfurnished once again. And I also like to mention that unfurnished options are for people who are going to stay long term. So if you want to come to Kampala for a long period of time, you should consider unfurnished options, but would assume that you're going to buy things to furnish your house. And then if you're going to stay for a short period of time, you should definitely consider a furnished place. Yeah. Obviously, we all know Airbnb, that's something that you can check out. But there is also an app called Tobayo, so you can also check out Tobayo app. I'm going to leave a link in the description or maybe their website. It's a marketplace for travelers on a budget. You can easily get hosted by people within Uganda or within Kampala. So if you're looking for a very affordable option that is furnished for a short stay, besides Airbnb and the Instagram pages that I'm going to give you guys to do your research, you can also look at the Tobayo app. So you have like a wide knowledge of how things are priced in this country. So that if you're going to ask someone to help you out find something, you already know the price you're going to expect before they actually say this is this amount, this is this amount. So that if they're trying to rip you off, you know better. If they're giving you a decent price and being genuine, then you can also understand that this person is trustworthy. So two, let's talk about transport. We have various modes of transport within Kampala that you can consider whether you are a visitor or a local resident like me. So we're going to talk about Uber. We're going to talk about border border or safe border. We're going to talk about using a taxi and then also going to talk about using a private car. So we are going to start with the most expensive all the way to the least expensive. The most expensive is Uber. So I'm going to take an example of myself. I live 14 kilometers from the city center. So from my place to Kampala Road is 14 kilometers. So an Uber is going to charge me about 37,000 for the city center. That is an equivalent of 10 US dollars. So if I do a round trip, it means I'm going to pay 74,000 Ugandan shillings and that's 20 US dollars. So on a monthly basis, if we do that times 24, Assuming you're going to the city every day, Monday to Saturday, we're going to pay about 1.7 million Ugandan shillings and we'll come to 480,000 US dollars. That is very expensive, but that is Uber option. So if you come to Kampala and you think you're going to be moving around a lot using an Uber, you may pay about $480 after one month. Obviously, that will be determined by where you're staying and where you're going and things like that. Yeah, but that's just to give you a rough example. 
the second option which i think is the second most expensive is if you have a private car it could be your personal car which you could come to kampala and choose to rent a car from car rental services so i'm going to put this in two different categories ugandans love cars that consume extremely well because you have a lot of traffic in kampala so how these like very tiny cars like if you have a vitz if you have an ipsum if you have an ist you guys know what i'm talking about people in kampala love these tiny cars which have like 1000 cc engine so if you have those i've never driven a tiny car <laughs> But from what I hear with my friends, if you do like to and flow from work, you could just put in about 25,000 shillings every day. And that's about 7 US dollars. So if we do like 24 days per month, let's say Monday to Saturday, Sunday you're just home, it could come to you spending about 600k per month UGX, which would come to 162 US dollars per month that you're spending on fuel or gas with the current prices of gas yeah so that is my rough estimate that i made then if you have a car that is not a good consumer by ugandan standards not a good consumer is if your car is like 2000 cc and above in kampala that's not considered a good consumer in as in our ugandan language or how we understand cars in this country so you will at least put in fifty thousand shillings per day to work and then to go back home if your car is not a good consumer so 50k per day is about 13.5 us dollars that you're going to spend per day on having a car so if we do that on a monthly basis you're going to pay about 1.2 million shillings per month just to fuel your car and that will come to about 324 us dollars per month that you'd expect on fueling your car but of course that doesn't include washing the car like every two days if someone hits your bumper while you're in traffic if you have to change your oil and that monthly services this is just on fuel but of course you have to do all those other little things on a monthly expense but i still think that having a personal car is definitely way cheaper than an uber and obviously way more convenient than an uber but of course if you're driving like a very huge car like if you have a v8 that's like a whole different story so <laughs> i'm trying to get numbers like for maybe middle income people or like reasonable like the majority of the what majority of people are going to use there but if you have a very huge car i have no idea how those consume and i'm thinking it's definitely going to be way more expensive to maintain a car with a bigger engine let's look at option number three when it comes to transport and that's using border a regular border a border is a motorcycle or using a safe border as long as you download the safe border app you know on your phone so this can be very convenient because one kampala has a lot of traffic if you want to beat the traffic then you just want to sit on a border and get to wherever you're going but also using the border is the most risky i'll be very honest with you guys border guys in kampala drive crazy i use borders all the time but even me i've used them for years sometimes i'm just scared for my life sitting on a border <laughs> i'm going to once again take an example of where i live i live 14 kilometers from the city center so usually a two and flow trip depending on the time i'll pay about eighteen thousand. so usually 18,000 or 18,500 up to 20,000 per day. So if we do 24 days a month, it's going to be 444,000 Ugandan shillings. That's 120,000 US dollars on transport per month if you want to use a border border in Kampala. But of course, if you're going to a very distant place, sometimes I will leave my home and go to like beyond town, especially if I'm filming content. Sometimes I will spend up to 50,000 just on border border per day and that's about 13.5 US dollars So once again, it's going to come back to how much distance you're covering per day or even how often you go to town Last but not least is the cheapest means of transport that we do have in Kampala and those are public means of transport and that is using something that we call a taxi so a taxi in kampala is not a taxi that you know if you come from a different city taxis in kampala is a white minibus with like a blue design 
those, that, those are what we call taxis in this city and they're offering public means of transport. So taxis are extremely cheap. Uh, they're very, very cheap if, if you're trying to save, but they're also very, very slow. They waste a lot of time. You never want to sit in a taxi in Kampala unless it's at the end of a very busy day and you're not in a rush to get home and you're going to feel very okay being stuck on traffic. Maybe you're watching YouTube or listening to some music and you really don't care what time you get home. But a trip from wherever you are to the city center is going to cost about 3,000 shillings. That's about 0.8 US dollars. It's not even a full dollar. So let's say you do to and flow, you're going to spend about 6,000 Ugandan shillings, which is about $1.6. Let's assume you do 24 times a month that you're going to the city center, you're going to spend about 144,000 Ugandan shillings. That's about 38 US dollars on transport per month in Kampala if you're using a taxi. So what you have to note is that it comes back to how much money do you have in your pocket and how convenient do you want to be. And I must say that many people in Kampala actually just sit in taxis and go home because they're extremely cheap and people are not trying to spend a lot of money because making money in this country is very, very hard. And also our salaries are very, very small, so no one likes to spend a lot. There you have it about transport. Uber, most expensive, but the most convenient. I think the most convenient is having a personal car. But it can also be very convenient uh, having an uh, ordering an Uber all the time. A taxi is the least expensive, but it also wastes a lot of time. So you pay very little money at the expense of your time that you're going to sit in a taxi, you know, waiting for all the traffic. But depending on what your needs are, I'm sure you will understand like what means of transport to use within Kampala. And if you want to know how to use a safe border, if you are a visitor within the city, I'm going to link for you guys one of the videos that I did last year on the cost of living, where I actually show you how to download the safe border app and use it. So I'll put a card here or here, wherever the card is supposed to be, and also leave the video link in the description so you can watch it so that you know how to order yourself a safe border the next time you are in Kampala. Let's talk about food. A food is very, very affordable in Kampala. We are blessed to have a country that has lots and lots of food in plenty. We are an agricultural based country. Over 80% of our economy is agriculture. So Ugandans, we are farmers. So we have lots of food in this country that is actually very, very affordable. Once again, let's take an example of myself, I just for one person. I spend about 13,000 shillings per day on food. That's about 3.5 US dollars. So I'll snack around here and there. Maybe I'll buy a yogurt. Obviously, I'll buy drinking water. I'll buy maybe crisps and then maybe I'll cook one meal later in the evening. Altogether, about 13,000 shillings per day. So once a week, I may order something out. I may order Cafe Java, or I may actually go out, sit somewhere and eat. So it's going to come to about 128,000 Ugandan shillings per week. So times four weeks a month, that's about 512,000 Ugandan shillings, which is about 138 US dollars. And that can actually even be a lot for food. You could even just do 100 US dollars for food and you can actually survive on that. I don't eat out every week. Most of the times I'll just cook or maybe I'll go to my friend's restaurant and eat, which is even way cheaper than maybe ordering in one of these, you know, like high end restaurants. If you want to know the prices of food at the market, I have two videos on that. One is the cost of living video of last year. And then another one is a whole entire video of me in the market. So I'm going to leave them below as well so that you can know how much you're going to spend to buy your fruits, to buy your vegetables and things like that. And I can also list for you the markets that you can actually go to to buy food within Kampala. There's also very many nice restaurants where you can get food as cheap as 10,000 shillings, which is about maybe $2.7. Item number four are going to be household items. So these are not any particular 
item but rather things that you just use around the house it could be washing powder it could be like paper towels it could be vim whatever you use around your house to keep up your day-to-day -day house looking good and clean and things like that so you're going to need about i would just say like 50 dollars 200 000 ugandan shillings that you're likely to spend on those things that you just need to use around the house next is going to be internet we do have two major service providers of telecommunication services in kampala i hope that's the right word we have airtel uganda then we have mta uganda so you can either buy a daily package weekly monthly the choice is yours those are packages that you actually load on your sim card if you want to create a hotspot between your phone and maybe your laptop the other option is to actually get a router installed in your house so you can have a Wi-Fi hotspot or a Wi-Fi connection. So once again, it's easy to just take my example. I'm one person, so I do a monthly bundle from Airtel. Its maximum speed is 20 Mbps and I pay 170,000 Ugandan shillings. That's about 45 US dollars. So what I would say is this package is just okay because it is unlimited i upload as many videos as i want i also watch a lot of youtube on top of being a creator i also consume a lot of youtube i just use a lot of data because i don't watch tv so all my leisure time is spent on the internet <laughs> so if you're someone who uses a lot of internet definitely consider a monthly package that's the one i use but if you're someone who is used to high speed internet, it's likely to irritate you. It's not the best, but it just works for me. But they also have packages that have extremely high speed. So you can opt for a package that has a higher speed. Another company that has this fiber internet in Kampala is called Zuku. So they have packages as cheap as 150,000 Ugandan shillings. That's about $40. That's if you want them to install that in your home so you can have Wi-Fi around the house. But the higher the speed, the higher amount you're going to pay for the package. So if you're one person, you probably have your phone and your laptop. You may go for the package that is maybe $40 or $45. You may not want to go beyond that. But if you're many people within the house, then maybe you may want to consider a package that is slightly higher with maybe better speeds and I can accommodate very many gadgets. So when it comes to internet, I also have to mention that what I particularly use is 4G. Some areas within Kampala have 5G. Some areas do not have 5G. What that means is if you go to the service providers like Airtel or MTN, they may come to install the router in your home. But if your area is not under 5G coverage, it means you may not be able to access the, the, the 5G. But if you're staying super, super close to the city center, those areas have 5G coverage. So you can even get 5G within your home. Yes, and be able to be able to have like very high speeds of internet. But that is obviously an option for someone who's going to be in Uganda for a very, very long time. If you're just a visitor, you may rely on the internet in your Airbnb or in your hotel. Obviously, most Airbnbs and most hotels are going to have Wi-Fi for their guests. The alternative is to download the MTN app and the Airtel app onto your phone and then buy daily bundles from as low as 0.2 US dollars, that's 1,000 Ugandan shillings, up to 5,000 Ugandan shillings, that's about 1.3 US dollars. So personally, when I step out of the house, assume I'm going to film a video somewhere or I'm going to do a vlog somewhere, I'll just buy that very cheap daily bundle just to keep maybe checking my WhatsApp or to check Google Maps for wherever I'm going. But on a monthly basis for my work, I do the Wi-Fi. When I step out of the house, I just pay that 1.3 USD or maybe that's 0.2 USD just to be able to get the bundle to take me for maybe two three hours yeah so that's a quick option for maybe visitors within the country but long term stay if you're someone who uses a lot of internet you should consider having wi-fi at home because at the end of the day it becomes very very cheap you don't have to worry about running out of data or you want to do something and then you don't have data 
yes what i would like to add about internet is that you can go to service centers so these service providers like airtel mtm zuku they have service centers so if you go to acacia mall you find service centers for airtel and mtn if you go to kampala road you find service centers for airtel and mtn if you go to tinder so in most suburbs uh, in most malls you find service centers for these service providers of telecommunication networks or telecommunication services so the goal is when you go to the service center depending on what your needs are just ask them for what you want and then they will advise you on the different packages alternatively they also have apps there is an airtel app there is an mtn app that you can download from the play store just have it on your phone and then use it to buy your bundles for data or for communication as well this leads into communication and this is local communication calling someone on their telephone without using whatsapp meaning without using internet or just sending them an sms so this is very very cheap actually i would say that just spend about fifty thousand ugx per month that's about 13.5 us dollars so for fifty thousand you get a bundle a monthly bundle that has 1200 minutes to call all local networks those are about 20 hours of talk time, which is a lot of time. I don't think anyone is going to talk more than 20 hours on phone unless you're discussing some, I don't know. <laughs> but 20 hours of talk time per month across all networks at 50,000 shillings. So this is a band that you can opt for. If you feel 50k is not enough, then you may do 70k, but I feel like that's just more than enough last but not least you definitely need some money for emergency on the side as a miscellaneous so i would say just have like a hundred dollars or maybe four hundred thousand ugandan shillings just on the side just in case you may want to you know do other things that i've not talked about you may want to buy something maybe a new outfit you may want to do your hair you may want to do your nails whatever you may want to go and get a massage so just leave some miscellaneous but for the basics about cost of living in Uganda, that is pretty much about it. I'm going to address a question because someone may say, once again, this is a lot of money. We know Ugandans are poor. Of course, not everyone is poor in this country. Some people are poor. Some people actually have a lot of money, like they are quite wealthy. So how do people survive on maybe $300 a month? uh two hundred dollars a month because we all know that ugandan salaries are extremely small so all the things that we've looked at i'm going to give you guys like an example of how someone could actually live on four hundred dollars a month in kampala so i'm going to break down for you each and every category so rent let's take maybe the cheapest option of four hundred thousand ugandan shillings of which it could be three hundred thousand for rent per month so that is their rent it is covered let's take transport of 144,000 ugandan shillings that is public means of transport wake up very early you go to work finish work wake up again and go back home food let's talk about maybe 370,000 per month that's just a hundred dollars that is actually enough for food if you like on a very tight budget you can budget that for a month and it would actually work out for you communication let's talk up let's talk about the 50k internet let's take it 170k per month for the internet let's put a miscellaneous of 200,000 maybe, maybe you want to go out with friends and grab a drink maybe you want to buy a nice shoe that you saw on your way home whatever it is let's put 50 dollars or 200,000 ugandan shillings as a miscellaneous let's put a hundred thousand for household items so this could be maybe like toilet paper it could be soap it could be like things for personal hygiene whatever you use let's just put a hundred thousand once again this is very small it can be way more than that but we are just assuming that someone is trying to live on a budget this could come to 387 us dollars now there are people who actually live on that kind of money here in uganda but they do not live comfortably that's what you have to understand they are just surviving but they are actually living so no one should be aspiring to say i want to live on 400 dollars a month in uganda 
yes you can live on it you'll be surviving you want to be living very comfortably you want to be enjoying your life to just be like just like a frugal life like i don't know how to explain <laughs> but just to help you guys understand people who make very small salaries in this country that's how much they earn if you take it to five hundred dollars then it means you have an extra hundred dollars per month maybe to spend on your hair to maybe spend on your i don't know massage do your nails whatever you want to do i'm assuming if you're a lady for the men just do your haircuts i don't know polish your shoes things like that take your clothes to be ironed and things like that yeah so and that is pretty much it about the cost of living I'm going to link for you down all resources that I think may be helpful to you for someone who's traveling to Kampala or even for someone who is within Uganda who wants maybe to find a home to rent and things like that. So be sure to leave a comment and let me know. If you're Ugandan, let me know how much you're surviving on on this country. It doesn't mean you're living well. Sometimes you are just surviving. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so leave a comment. Let us know how much you're surviving on in this country. Yes. Yeah, so if you're in a different country also let us know how much you're surviving on in that country and how things are comparing if you look at the cost of living in that country and the cost of living in uganda i thank you so much for watching and in conclusion obviously if you want to travel to uganda i actually have a ugandan travel guide you can get it there is a link in the description it is on my website if you buy it, you come directly to your email. Everything is automated. You will receive it immediately after buying it. And then if you're within Kampala or maybe within Uganda, you want to get a ticket to go to Dubai, you want a visa, you want to travel and things like that, reach out to Wide Travel Deals. It's a travel agency within Kampala. They will help you out. They are on Uganda Road. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.